Today, we're going to share an interesting detail about the Ukraine-Russia war, which has been a part of our lives for almost two years. Can you stand up against one of the world's largest military powers when you have extremely limited resources? For instance, how can you resist a country with 4,200 combat aircraft when you only have 300? Or can you stop a force with six times more tanks and 16 times larger naval forces than yours? What if we tell you there's a country that has managed to turn the seemingly impossible situation around using drones ranging from $100 to $5,000 in value? Can you guess which country we're talking about? Yes, it's Ukraine. How did drones descending from the dusty shelves of technology stores manage to challenge Russia, one of the world's largest military powers? Let's take a look at the Ukrainian battlefield through the eyes of a drone this time and trace the game-changing role of unmanned aerial vehicles in the field of warfare. Do you remember the days when people entered a guessing race not about when Russia would start its attack on Ukraine, but about how many hours it would last? Those who said Ukraine won't last 72 hours have been waiting for the war to end for two years now. How heartbreaking is that? For months, a war has been ongoing right next to us, seemingly endless and with an unknown end date. And as always, it's the children, women, and innocent civilians who bear the brunt. Now let's rewind the calendar a bit and take you back to the early days of the war. Perhaps you rightfully don't remember those days in detail. However, we are confident that the person we are about to talk about has definitely stayed in a corner of your mind. In the early days of the war, we were all laughing at the tweets of a Turkish Twitter user. This account tagging the Ukrainian embassy said, How can I reach you? I have strategies that I can't openly share, and they could change the course of this war. Do you remember? At that time, Everyone mocked these posts, but at the end of the day, this suggestion became one of the most decisive elements of the Russia-Ukraine war. The basic idea was as follows. There are tens of thousands of semi-professional unmanned aerial vehicles waiting to be sold to citizens in stores. By placing hand grenades and Molotov cocktails on them, kamikaze drone attacks can be launched against Russian armored units. If I remember correctly, it was around the middle of 2022. Ukrainian drones suddenly began to have more influence on the course of the war. During that time, a Ukrainian commander giving an interview said, We have two major wars with Russia. One is an artillery battle, the other is a technology war. Yes, there may be too many subheadings under the technology war part, but when you read further into the interview, it becomes clear that the fundamental issue he was talking about was Ukraine's unmanned aerial vehicles, including drones. While the average price of their drones was $2,000, the value of the Russian targets they hit amounted to millions of dollars. This was truly one of the most unbalanced, or if we use the term correctly, one of the most interesting wars from an asymmetric perspective that the world has witnessed to date. After a while, the bells started ringing for the Kremlin. Although one of the Russian generals who failed to achieve the set goals went and the other came, the desired success did not show itself. During this period, the world's media carried to the screens the moments when a large number of unguided artillery shells, rockets and missiles fired blindly by Russia into Ukraine fell at different points in the city. In fact, Russia had short and medium-range ballistic missiles in its possession. However, the frequent use of them against Ukraine meant that we had nothing left against a possible NATO or other threat in the background. Putin and his staff did not take this risk. Perhaps they did not take it. Let's close the Russia bracket here and let's continue with our main topic, Ukraine's unmanned aerial vehicles. 
We mentioned that you add unmanned aerial vehicles to a network and all the elements in the network can communicate with each other. Ukraine actually did not do this with soldiers. Groups presenting themselves as tech-savvy young people in the country came to the fore in this business. With an application they made, the exact location and real-time information of the image taken by the drone were instantly sent to the artillery and anti-tank troops. This flexibility has been one of Ukraine's greatest achievements. If you want to detect enemy positions, under normal circumstances, you will send your special forces there, and perhaps you will lose some of your elite unit. All Ukraine did was send multiple drones to risky areas. After a while, things got to such a point that two Ukrainian unmanned aerial vehicles were falling on almost every Russian soldier in the field. And believe me, the psychological effect of the images obtained by drones on Russian soldiers was even more effective than the most powerful weapons. It is possible to divide the unmanned aerial vehicles used in the Ukrainian field into four main groups. The first and most common ones are described as commercial and portable drones. Yes, we are talking about small, simple and inexpensive drones that you can also think of. Ukrainians call it do-it-yourself. A simple unmanned aerial vehicle is equipped with relatively more advanced cameras, some explosives and small fins, and is driven into the field. It is mainly used at low altitudes and short distances. It is possible to call the other product group kamikaze UAVs or suicide UAVs. And of course, the other item is remotely operated vehicles. I mean, unmanned aerial vehicles. I mean, unmanned aerial vehicles. First of all, no matter what, drones now have meanings far beyond small, cute devices that capture video from the air. Secondly, they are still very cheap, considering the tanks, ships, armored units and other elements against them. Their costs are low and their effects are high. This reality is the most important sign that we will see them on the battlefield for a long time. It is possible to buy 55,000 medium-level drones for the money of an F-35. Thirdly, they are able to terrorize very large masses. More simply, drones flying in the sky can give thousands of people the fear that they could fall on us at any moment. In addition, using a drone against civilian elements is much simpler than other military equipment. Fourth, it is very, very easy to access this kind of vehicle. If you want, after watching this video, go to a shopping site and see it with your own eyes. If you have money, it will take a maximum of one week for the drone you want to come to your door. Moreover, shipping is also free in most of them. We put artificial intelligence, ease of access to 3D printing, easy and wireless connections in the fifth item. If you have these, you have everything to create a drone that will do wonders on the battlefield. Now when we think of a drone, we think of nothing but pain, tears, war, and unfortunately, the cold face of death recorded from moment to moment. That's it for today. See you in another video. Goodbye.